Hello, everyone. Um, so uh, <coughs> it's an early Sunday morning, so I guess you're all very interested in uh, these open source tools for water resource management. But just to know who I'm talking to, can you please raise your hand if you are a water resource manager or have a background in water resources? No, not, not too much. Okay, I thought so. So I prepared a very short introduction in water resource management because it's very important that you know the background for some choices that these, these, these tools made. So hydrogeology, it's part of water resource management and it deals with uh, the study for groundwater and groundwater flow and related issues. And as we know it today, it started about 200 years ago, a bit less, with an engineer called Darcy who came up with the idea that groundwater flows from high to low pressure following a certain constant here, this K in his equation, uh, which is called uh, hydraulic conductivity. And it's, uh, it's a value uh, related to properties of the soil, like porosity and grain size, etc. And so, okay, he had in his time uh, some monitoring wells where he could uh, examine water pressure to, to get a grip on uh, water flowing through the subsoil. And in, in one dimension, of course, this equation is very easy to solve. But groundwater flows in three dimensions, so other people um, put effort in uh, simulating groundwater flow in three dimensions. Uh, for this, there are several options to take, but I think the most well-known package today, ModFlow, um, discretizes the subsoil in blocks, and then this equation in three dimensions is solved for each block. Um, solving this equation is not very straightforward, um, but uh, there are a lot of tips and tricks, etc. Um, and there are solvers today available that are also open source. Um, but of course, the most important thing is not that you are able to solve an equation for a numerical model, because that's just an approximation of the real world. You have to go back to your data, because that what you're, that's what you're actually working with. And so looking back to this f data from Darcy, uh, you have monitoring wells, which is simply x, y coordinates, a, a z for depth, and a value related to it. And then you have some properties of the subsoil. If you're lucky, you have properties for different layers. And you can put these in your equation. Um, and nowadays, of course, you have a lot more data. You really have plenty of data. You have to choose between the data. And normally, uh, I think most people use a GIS system to group all the data and build your conceptual model. Your conceptual model is something you think uh, describes the groundwater flow for your purpose uh, the best way possible. And then usual practice is that you do that in a GIS and you take those results and insert them in a graphical user interface that solves this equation. And you build a numerical model in a different software. There are some software is available that can do both, but in my daily practice, we have to switch. And that's what this tool is uh, very nice, um, is that it integrates, sorry, it integrates both the GIS and the solver. So this is the, the FreeWatt project. It's a Horizon, it was, a, or it is a Horizon 2020 project. And, um, its main idea was to provide an open source public domain GIS integrated modeling platform uh, uh, to promote uh, this uh, scientifically um, approach uh, to participate with all actors from an early stage. Uh, so everyone can look at the GIS and, and, and tell something about it. Not everyone can look at a numerical model. Uh, so if you use this uh, GIS, in an integrated way, you can get better uh, uh, interaction with everyone. And of course, also, it's open source. So uh, the project leader, one of his ideas is to move money from license to human capital, which I think is very nice. Uh, it's developed as a QGIS plugin. Uh, they chose QGIS because it already provides a lot of uh, options or, or other modules that are used in this uh, plugin. For example, you have the Spatialite <coughs> database um, where, you, where all the data are stored. Um, and through the Python interface, um, use is made of this uh, FlowPy library, which is an interface to this uh, ModFlow model of the USGS. 
And then several tools were developed to work with your GIS data um, and your uh, Modflow data. This is a bit of a uh, flowchart of the different modules that were developed in uh, FreeWatt. It's quite a lot. I will be very short uh, because I don't have very much time, but I will show you where you can find more information on the web. So you have one is the ACFA GIS. It's uh, something for chemical data storage and data analysis. You have, it's written, it's written. You have the observation analysis tool, which is more related to time series. Uh, then you, of course, have GIS tools integrated in QGIS. Um, you have the tools related to the Modflow part. Um, there is also an integration with the calib calibration and sensitivity uh, tool, and, of course, some visualization. Uh, in the next slides, I will briefly introduce uh, some uh, modules. I didn't prepare a live demo because yeah, I didn't know I, w I was going to be able to, and I also have not very good experience with live demos, actually. So it's print screens. So I'm sorry for those who were waiting for a live demo. Uh, anyway, you can find it on the web. This is a print screen of this ACFA GIS uh, part. So you have the FreeWatt tool. Uh, it's in your uh, menu bar here. The first one is ACFA GIS, which is composed of several um, subsets. You have one for uh, database management. Then there are several options for a hydrochemical analysis of your data and also a hydrogeological analysis of the data. So this is more related to chemical data and this is more related to um, your water pressures, etc. Uh, I will not go into detail how all the data are inserted and you can manage them. It's all nicely done. Uh, just uh, show you some, some outputs that you can easily obtain with the data. So, for example, uh, you can get a visual representation of your sodium absorption ratio. You can make a Piper plot. And then here, this one I, I even didn't know about. Uh, you can get uh, a lot of results. And actually, all these results you can use to look at your hydro chemical uh, properties of uh, your groundwater and, and discern which uh, groundwater uh, sample differs from another one to get an idea of how groundwater flows between wells, if it's from a different origin, yes or no. Um, so these are the, the sim simple plots. And this is actually a 2D map where you have the same, um, where you visualize the difference uh, on a map where you get ew, these results here. Uh, and this one is enlarged then, where you have differences in, what is it? Uh, sodium, magnesium, here the, the cations and the anions. And that way you can get on a map a view of the, the differences between groundwater uh, in, in your domain. So that's for uh, Aqua GIS, uh, already a nice uh, outcome. This is for the observation analysis uh, tool where um, you have, uh, on the one hand, uh, options to gather data from sensors, um, insert them also in your database. Um, that's this one. Um, you can then easily uh, export, export the data from the database to your Modflow model to use as observed heads. And then in the output, you can get here the, um, what is the observed? I think this one was the uh, simulated, and this one is the observed um, heads at that uh, monitoring well. So this is uh, also very nice to have a very direct link between your monitoring data and your model output. And of course, you can use QGIS itself to make nice maps, etc., uh, of your uh, results. The main part of uh, this uh, FreeWatt uh, tool is, of course, the, the modeling with Modflow itself. Um, this is the, yeah, you have, so here you can see it a little bit. Maybe you have different uh, options you have to fill in. I guess people who have already worked with a Modflow GUI know that you have to, to in insert a lot of data. And this, is, this one is related to uh, the packages that your solver needs. Yeah? So you can choose to model or to simulate groundwater flow. You can also do solute transport or heat transport. There is also an option 
for water management. So this is more related to agricultural practices and how uh, water budgets close for your uh, entire system. And of course also this model calibration uh, uh, at the end. But this, uh, I will not, the last two I will not go into detail. Um, so it uses Modflow 2005. Uh, you can select the desired packages here, uh, insert some solver parameters, and I, yeah, it's the usual, the usual, the usual mod flow uh, stuff. And then you press run, and hopefully it converges. And then you get some uh, some results. Here I show one result for um, pumping wells <coughs> next to uh, next to a river, where you ha this is the 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 flow paths that are visualized. Um, where you can even, yeah, I don't think I included that as a slide, but you can also give a color to the different, um, f uh, to the time it took for a particle to reach that well, so you can even increase the, the, the visual uh, representation. Then one final uh, thing I wanted to show about the, the modeling part. Uh, is this one. So you see here, this is the, actually, it's not including the other one, but you see here the, the discretization of the domain, which is, of course, necessary for Modflow. And this is a heat transport model, where you hi inject heat and you uh, extract water here. Uh, and this is a lower permeability zone. And so you get the usual, people familiar with Modflow, this is the usual output uh, you get from uh, um, a Modflow <coughs> file. So that's all possible here now in QGIS itself. But um, of course, wh so where, where is FreeWatt now? Maybe for the record, I didn't state I was not part of the FreeWatt project. I got included at a later stage as a beta tester. Um, so I'm not, I'm, I'm speaking for FreeWatt, but I'm not part of the project. Eh? That being said, uh, where is FreeWatt now? So there are a lot of stakeholders involved. Uh, I heard more than 500. There is uh, a LinkedIn group. Uh, there is some, some Twitter uh, going on. And this is already from a time ago, but uh, there are more than 3,000 downloads of the software. Uh, so now it will be even more, I don't know. And it's quite diverse. It's, uh, of course, a Europe it was a European project, so most of the downloads are in Europe. But you see that ev every continent is a bit represented, so you have a quite diverse uh, user group. And also the purposes for which people indicate they will be using this package. It's uh, mostly research, but there's also uh, training, uh, cons consulting, um, and then some other uh, purposes also. But so you have a diverse user group and also a diverse. Um, uh, it's it's used in, in in various cases. So it's very it will be very interesting to get to know the the use cases of all these persons to even improve the the tool uh, later on. And now actually I'm giving this talk. Th hoping to persuade some people to join uh, FreeWatt. If you're interested, you can download the codes uh, from various places. I will explain later, but I think the most in interesting one is this one. It's the FreeWatt website, where you have to fill in why you will be using it. It's nice for the people from FreeWatt to know <coughs> their users, but also for you. If you do it this way, you can get access to the manuals and the tutorials that come to, uh, to the download also. There are some uh, Google groups for um, talking about users, application, bug reporting, and also for developers. And of course, for developers, if you, if you would like to have direct access to the code, uh, it's hosted on GitLab. So this is the main uh, access to the code itself. And so I, I encourage everyone to have a look and maybe um, add some, uh, some new stuff or, or make some corrections because it, it was a project that's a continuation of previous projects, so it carries along some history. And also, when it start, development started, it was still QGIS 2. Point and, and on. So it's developed in Python 2. Now QGIS is going forward to 3. So this tool will also need to be translated to Python 3, or converted to Python 3. And there are also some... Um, other issues that could be ameliorated, for example, your computational grids mm, can use some advanced features 
something about database interaction, etc. I will not go all into detail. Um, and of course, docs and unit tests, it's always a bit late to add. And, and then if you have a look at the code, of course, you are very welcome to add IDs you have uh, concerning these tools or, or uh, yeah, of course, develop them uh, yourself. So the, the project, I don't remember if it's already finished or is finishing, uh, but of course we are hoping to that it will continue. Eh? So um, we are now actively developing, or th there is a community present, but we would like to have as much people involved as possible. And therefore, this talk was mainly aimed at you guys to join uh, FreeWatt and make its development even progress further and faster in the, f in the near future, I hope. And with that, I'm, I'd like to thank you for being here this early, and I hope to hear a lot of uh, very interesting questions. Okay, so the question was how, how large the area is that, that can, how large is the area that you can model? And that uh, strongly depends on your, your discretization. So you can choose the entire world, but your, the, the, the number of blocks you can put in your model is, mo is currently limited. That was what I said about this grid architecture. It's rather limited. It comes from a GIS background, sort of, I guess. So in, <laughs> in commercial packages or others, you can include millions of cells. In free, what not? You, you can only include a few thousands. So if you want to uh, model the entire world, you will be very limited, and you will have, you, you will have a block size of Belgium, for example. Uh, if that's OK for you, it's no problem. Uh, but that's one of the, the aspects, I think, that, that really uh, requires further uh, development. Uh, so I hope it ans that answers your question. OK.
Okay. Okay. So indeed, I would advise you can put the issue on GitLab issue, and then you or someone else who has the same can add it in, in this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> indeed. Okay, about the compiling, I'm, I, that I cannot answer. Um, it's licensed under the GPL version 2. Um, and compiling, sorry. But, uh, yeah. Yes? Indeed, you're right. Um, there are um, courses being given, or being given in the in this project even. Uh, so the tutorials that you find online, they provide material for teachers to use in their courses. And there are uh, courses being given with those tutorials um, from people of the project in yeah, Spain, Italy, I think in the Netherlands also. I'm not sure. Uh, but so it's possible, yes, of course, and it's available. Yeah. Okay, no further questions. Thank you.